Well, this year, several school districts in the Tri-County area have brand new superintendents. It's a trend that's also being seen across the state and nationwide. Tonight, we are taking a closer look at what's leading to the turnover and what some say needs to be done. It's like painting half of a mural and then having to go back and paint over what you've already done every single year. That becomes very frustrating. A survey from the American School District panel found that superintendent turnover was at 17 percent between the 2022-23 school year and the year before. Barnett Berry, a research professor at the University of South Carolina, tells me this is not a new phenomenon. And I think we see it today at a time when the stakes are even higher for young people. Um, uh, and their futures. This year in the Tri-County area, Charleston County School District and Dorchester District 4 both have brand new superintendents. Dorchester District 2 welcomed a new superintendent last year. Colleton County has an interim superintendent and Berkeley County School District superintendent is now in his first full year. Education has always been political, but it does seem like the temperature has been turned up a bit in the last few years. Barry says the turnover can be harmful to school districts. When you have churn at the top of the organization, you have churn in the middle. And guess who suffers the consequences the most? And that is uh, the young people. And teachers agree. I want to be paying attention to my lessons not whether we're going to have a leader in two weeks or four weeks or next year. Barry says he believes changes to the superintendent position are just one cause of the turmoil. The job has been increasingly uh, unmanageable. Uh, I think obviously in the last couple of years, uh, we had to turn superintendents into uh, uh, global health experts. Jody Stallings, the director of the Charleston Teacher Alliance, says a lack of patience is also contributing to this problem. And when we don't see overnight progress, sometimes, you know, boards get a little impatient or superintendents move from one position to the next. I think it's a myriad of reasons, but, but if I had to pinpoint one, it would probably be just like not enough patience with giving people time to, to see if they can make a difference. And the issue isn't just with superintendents, as we've also seen an increase in teacher vacancies across the nation. Stalling says the two issues are indirectly related. The number one and two issues are salary and discipline. So when you have continuity from a superintendent, they may have more influence to raise those salaries, and they certainly have more influence to enact the, the, the policies necessary to make sure that discipline is enforced. So I think when you have that constant turnover, you never really give a superintendent a chance to do that. Barry has a few solutions to the problem. Getting parents and students more involved in district actions, more consensus when bringing in new leadership and creating trust. Without those conditions to kind of facilitate um, school improvement, um, South Carolina parents, business leaders and policy leaders are never going to get the results they need. So let's set those conditions uh, for everyone in the system. Now, Stallings also says allowing teachers to implement their own solutions in classrooms and providing them with the resources they need to do so could help the problem by taking some pressure off of superintendents.